So recently I was given the privilege of playing the Path of Exile 2 beta in uh, in LA for a little a little event over the last weekend in March. Um, this beta was a little different than the versions that we've previously seen. The versions we saw at ExileCon in the past were like these preset characters that had all their skills and gear like predetermined at a certain level in a certain part of the campaign and you just play it from that point. Here we had um, the ability to play from level one and go through the game as you would when it actually comes out and experience it uh, properly. You get to pick kind of your skill gems, you get to, you know, you start with your gear and you're just playing through the quest state um, as normal. One of the first things they showed us when uh, they get, got us all together was a demo of Octavian playing the three classes that we could choose from um, that this day. And the first thing I saw was on Ranger, you can kind of just attack while moving with like pretty much everything. You like maintain your current momentum uh, when you're using like uh, mouse movement, and with the uh, WASD movement, you can just control where you're going the entire time at a reduced speed, which is really awesome. And when I first saw that, I knew instantly I was gonna play Ranger. I wasn't gonna mess around with um, the melee guy at all because like he could move while shooting a boat. Like, what more do I need to say, right? Uh, uh, the way the skill system worked, it kind of felt like because this is just the demo version of the game, we were kind of being kept on rails a little bit. Like for Ranger, for example, you had two pretty clear choices. You can go down like a lightning arrow path on your gem selection, or you can go down like a chaos section. Um, I chose lightning because lightning uses lightning arrow, and lightning arrow is sick. I uh, love that skill. Just more satisfying sounds and all that, as you can see. Uh, the current skills I'm using is right click lightning arrow, on W, we have a skill called uh, Lightning Rod, which is kind of the core of where a lot of the damage comes from. And on Q, we have something which I think is called Storm Color Arrow, which uh, just like shoot an arrow into a target, and then it gets Storm Called. It's, you know, it's Storm Color Arrow, and has a super high shock chance. The cool thing about Lightning Rod is you basically put a rod on the ground, and then if any lightning skills chain to that rod, it'll explode for area damage around it. And that's kind of where a lot of the pack clear comes from. It's like putting on lightning rods and then shooting it with uh, lightning arrows. Here I'm using Snipe because this monster is lightning and shock resistant. Snipe is a, an interesting skill. It requires it requires you to release it at the exact right time. You'll notice I'm doing like no damage with these hits because I'm not releasing it properly. But here I think we're gonna get one good shot in. And it like does like way more damage, guaranteed crit, knocks it back and stuns it. It, like you have to release snipe exactly when it full charges. If you over charge it, um, it does nothing. If you under charge it, it does nothing. Right there, I also did it properly. Like once you get the timing down, it's actually really, really, really high damage, high burst, but it's super high mana cost. So I didn't use it too much in this run because it requires you to stand still and channel, and you know it's still Path of Exile. Standing still, it's not ideal. Here we get barrage. Barrage. If I knew how to play the game at this point, my character would have instantly been super strong. But I kind of, you know, wasn't really doing the proper rotation, the proper abilities. The way Barrage works is it's not a support gem or like an active attack like it was in Path of Exile 1. Here it buffs your next attack to repeat uh, and fire arrows sequentially. So um, it, I think it also can consume frenzy charges to like add more repeats. I didn't generate frenzies in this build. Frenzies um, are a little harder to, to come by and they do different things in Pepper Exile too. I didn't have time to figure out how to get them in. Here we're gonna see a little little mini boss. This is the middle deck one. And this guy actually gives the first uncut support jump that you get access to. You can drop support gems before, before this point, but this is when you get to choose. And it's really when you kind of get some good agency in how you want your character to play. After this, if you had a preset plan on how to put the character, you would reach like your maximum power level right after killing this guy and getting multi dodge which you'll see why later. And I mean, this is like a middle of Act 1 boss, like, like, like a Brutus equivalent, and you can see he has way more abilities. He's got this little like frontal like uh, slam where he stems in front, stems behind. He's got these little ghost guys flying everywhere, he's got ranged attacks, he's got all kinds of different mechanics. And this is, I mean, this is like the sixth boss I think I fought at this point, and they all are 
way more involved than uh, the Path of Exile 1 campaign bosses are. The I think for the majority of this fight, I'm kind of just spamming Stormcaller Arrow because it just does the most damage. I, I did a lot of testing with like, do we drop like three lightning rods on the ground and press like some lightning arrows or like whatnot, but like that would require the boss to be stationary for a long period of time. And after doing a lot of testing on prior bosses, I kind of just came to the conclusion that at this point on the character, just using Stormcaller Arrow nonstop was best. And it was, but that changed the moment I got Barrage which is next level, level 9. I, I can't actually get it yet, I think. Or do I? No, I, I'm wrong. I have it already. I have it. I'm just looking at a, a, a new gem, which is Herald of Thunder. Herald of Thunder is sick when I get that later. But I, I don't think we're going to see that for a, a while. That's like early act 2. But here with... Oh, we get Escape Shot. This one's huge for avoiding uh, getting surrounded. Escape Shot. So there's no move skills in, in this game, not like Flame Dash or anything. Escape Shot's like a disengage. You can use it to not get surrounded. But here we get multi proj which is huge. multi Pro is absolutely massive for um, for Lightning Arrow once we get it there. I think I'm going to do a little bit of uh, testing, some experimenting with it when I first start using it, trying to figure out the best um, the best gym to put it on. So as you can see here, we, once I click on the Ranger tab, we're going to see a lot of options. Come on, bud, you got this. Here we go. There's so many choices. So because this is a level one support gem, we can only choose the first row, but there's like so much stuff on there that eventually if I played longer, we get access to. Here, I wasn't really sure like why I couldn't put it on Lightning Rod because I can't read, but the bit here is when you add a support gem to a uh, skill, it adds a requirement based on the support gem. So I don't have enough decks to use two deck support gems on Lightning Rod. So I'm like reading the gem tags, trying to figure out why I can't do this? I'm not. I. 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 It's. I. I got there eventually. I got there eventually. It took me a little bit, and I did a little bit of testing, trying to figure out like, should I put lightning rod or multi prod on lightning rod so I spawn more rods and I can use like lightning arrow earlier, or whatnot. Um, my eventual conclusion was that multi prod on lightning rod is not ideal because it actually reduces the damage of the explosions. So even though you get more rods, they do one third damage. So it's just it's a net even. And I think here in this clip, in this footage, I've already kind of done that testing and figured it out that putting multi proj on lightning arrow is ideal, and then using lightning rod with uh, like n nothing is best. I didn't, you know, this is you know this is the first playthrough. I had no idea what to expect, no plans, no anything. So it took me a little bit to properly learn like the rotation for the character. And you'll notice my guy gets like. My guy gets dumpstered. If I take, if I, if I get hit by things, I die fast. And that trend um, is constant throughout all that one, all the bosses. Uh, you need to not get hit on this class at least. And there's not, you, there's no life nodes anymore in the game, so you can't really invest in like a lot of defense to overcome that. Oh, I'm getting absolutely surrounded and rolled here. But this, if I knew how to play the class, I could one shot this whole pack. But I, I hadn't gotten there yet. So it's, it's quite a struggle. I'm just like shooting lightning arrows into a pack of 15 monsters that, it, it, you know, we get there eventually. But if I knew the proper rotation of like lightning rod, lightning rod, kite them over the rods, barrage, lightning arrow, it would just one shot the pack and it'd be glorious. But I haven't gotten there yet. So it's a learning process. Because there's no phasing and like no like flame dash kind of move skills, you have to be really careful with your movement. I, uh, you know, most of my deaths weren't included in this footage, uh, you know, for, for obvious reasons. Some were, but like, it's it's very easy to just get surrounded and killed. Especially when you play the game as aggressively as I do, where like, I'm trying to group things up to AoE and it's done optimally, fight big packs and all that. It's really easy to get surrounded and killed, which is why Escape Shot is pretty important to, for, like, to get out of Delphi Guard and be able to go over monsters. I think Sork or Wizard, I'm not sure what it's called in, in, in this one. Um, doesn't actually have access to anything like that early game. And Sork, when, when I, I did a small Sork session, I got surrounded and killed like six times in the third zone. I was getting obliterated on Sork. It was, it was painful. But Ranger, once you get access to most of the skills, it's pretty strong. You'll see three life pots, two mana pots. Um, the only utility class that I've seen at this point is... It was a flash that effectively, it was a... Um, freeze removal suffix, but that was the entire flask. Like it was, you know, if you're frozen or chilled, you remove those and become immune to them for a bit. That was the entire flask. And at this point, I have like no sustain of mana or life outside of flasks. 
so I just chose to only use flasks. And Ranger has one major benefit that the other classes uh, don't have access to, at least early on. Ranger, in its starting tree, has the option of specking into um, gain one life flash charge per three seconds, or gain one mana flash charge per three seconds, or both if you want them. Uh, I chose to get the life flash node instantly. Like, as soon as I could path there, I had it. I pathed through the 75 nodes of like, charge damage, and I got that instantly, because um, it was pretty clear that the combat in this game is uh, more, it's just like sustained combat. You don't just one shot everything and blast through it. So I felt like I, I, I need a better sustain. So I expected to those, those charges so I wouldn't have to go out to town constantly to get life flash charges. And that is one major difference. In this game, you don't get charges for your flash for killing normal monsters. Only for uh, fighting magic and rare and of course bosses. I think the way boss fights work, it's like it's kind of like Val Souls, where like you get them as you do damage to them over time or something like that. I didn't really have to go back to town or run a fast at all because Ranger mana costs are pretty low, and I had the life fast sustain, so I was I was kind of vibing, having a good time on boss fights. Um, <laughs> talking with some of the other guys there on some other classes, uh, they were they were there was a little bit of a struggle, you know, a little, little bit of a some problems on some of the bosses, and we're gonna show some of those as well, some of the boss fights. Because there was like, I mean, there was like nine bosses in Act 1, and two of them were like really like proper bosses, which is such a stark, you know, contrast from how the Vex Law 1, where like the early campaign bosses are like, you know, it's like Brutus. If he punches you, he slams you. And the, I mean, the graphics in a lot of these zones is, is just amazing. It's such a. It feels like a real world, and it looks awesome, and these monsters want to kill me, and I think they do, but maybe not in this clip. Um. Towards the end of Act 1, like, look how much damage you take. Like, you just get absolutely obliterated the moment anything touches you, which is why being able to move while shooting and being ranged are very good, and I instantly chose these. And right there, I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but the pickup range for loot is substantially higher than Final Fantasy 1, which I'm super happy about. It's something that I said would be, like, required if they were to remove phasing from the game. Because in Path of Exile 1, to pick up an item, you have to be touching the item. You have to literally be on top of it. Pixel perfect on top of it to loot it. In this game, it's... Using a multiplier isn't really a, a good example because of how small the range was in Path of Exile 1, but it's like 10 times bigger. Like, you can pick up or interact with, with things on the ground from like, probably the equivalent of like, 15 units of Path of Exile 1, if you know, know what you know units are. It's really nice. Like the moment you play it, you'll instantly no notice it on the first thing you pick there. up, and it's it's so nice. Here, I'm just kind of looking through uh, skill gem stuff. I don't have, I, I, so I kind of already have everything that I want at this point, so I just like grab some random thing and just don't like use it. I didn't get moosey boots the entire time, so my guy's kind of just waddling around, and there's no quicksilver flash, so you're kind of just moving at a pretty con constant rate the entire time. The bad part of Act 1 gets like really dangerous, especially once you get to the final zone. Like the monsters there are brutal. Like one of them is like a, he just like blitzkrieg hooks you and just one shots you, like they're, they're so strong. Ooh, and waypoints pick up by walking near them instead of clicking on them. Which is very minor, but it's nice, it's neat. I think these guys are the first exploders we encounter, which you can kind of tell the moment you see them. Like they're these like glowing things, like, like I, I saw that before I even killed one, I was like, oh that guy's gonna explode. They're on death, like, ground puddle, but I, I think it's mechanics. We're just kiting, having a good time. And getting stuck a little bit <laughs> with, with Escape Shot. Escape Shot is so powerful, but it's... It's effectively like, like a disengage ability. It sends you backwards, not forwards. So to go precisely in one direction, you have to precisely put your cursor in the exact opposite direction, which is a skill that I am not too good at, as is evident by a lot of these clubs where I get stuck on corners and stuff. And there, finally, here, like we're, we're almost at the end of Act 1, and I finally learned the proper combo, which is put lightning rods on the ground, and then use barrage and lightning arrow. And the way that this works, because we have multi-proj on lightning arrow, is barrage makes those multi-proj sequential, and then it repeats it multiple times. So if you have like one letting let, let rod on the ground and you shoot one time with one target, you're gonna get like one lightning rod explosion. With multi-proj barrage, 
you're gonna get like 15 or like some huge number. You just see this like huge explosion instantly kills the entire pack. It is massive damage when done properly. But it's not that easy to always do properly because like it's like a one second like kind of cast time, which you can move while doing it. But it's very easy to like get stunned out of it or to just like aim the wrong direction or mess it up in some way. This kind of thing just gonna take a little bit more uh a little more grinding, you know, a little more experience to get it properly. This is a, a nice bow upgrade. I think at this point I'm still using like a level 5 bow. We just ID a big old percent increased damage bow. Real nice, real nice. And then I end up getting a much better one at the end of, act, at the end of active one, which we'll see. But weapon upgrades, you feel them in this game. Like, because I have no auras, no sources of extra flat damage. So when you get a weapon that's twice as big, you just instantly do double damage. And it's very noticeable. This final Act 1 zone, the Iron Manor, it's a it's like a three-part zone. It's pretty long. We're gonna probably just cut to the boss. Because this is like a like a 10-minute zone. It's a long clear. So here I am coming up on the Executioner, which is like probably the Brutus equivalent of like a middle of Act 1 uh, boss. He's kind of brutal. And he, uh, he definitely gets me at least once, I think. We'll see if that's in this one. So he is a typical melee guy, he comes around, tries to swing on you. I'm a ranger, so I'm just hiding him. He has a few mechanics, a similar like frontal back roll, like a, the prior boss had that dropped the uncut support gem earlier, having like, all the ghosts and stuff. So you have to watch out for that. If you're just doing circles around him, you'll get caught by the person that goes backwards. He spawns some adds. They try to kill you, so you have to have like some AoE. That mechanic right there, this is my first time seeing it, so I had no idea what the telegraph was. So basically, he um puts like a little circle on the ground and then summons an anvil that just drops out of the sky. So I guess they're doing like blacksmithing up there or something. And it lands on you and it does a lot of damage. Um, I think it's supposed to just kill you, but my character has a little bit of life. It's right there. Yeah, he just has an anvil. That's sick. One thing you'll notice about these bosses is they have, under their health bar, a progress bar, which is kind of like like a stagger mechanic, almost. It's not the same, really. I don't think it's, it's not based on crowd control, it's based on damage. If you do a lot of damage to um, this boss quickly, it will fill up that bar, and then it will stun him. That's a bug. Not actually, not actually a bug. I, that, that, that's a skill issue, skill issue. Sometimes you get hit, and when you get hit, often you die. Um, th these characters, like, like the damage output of monsters relative to the defense that these characters have, is, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard. I think it's intentionally balanced that way for these demos. I don't know if it'll be uh, this difficult when it actually comes out. It might be, who knows. One of the things that's like a little weird is like, it's hard. It's been hard to adapt to. Is um, he just kicked me in the face? Jesus! Uh, you don't have life notes, right? There's no life notes. So even if you want to invest in like more defense before this boss, you can't really do that through the passage tree in the early game as easily. You need to just like farm more levels. So you have more base life and like maybe get like a lucky life mod on one of your pieces of gear. But you can't just like spec into life nodes to uh, like face tank it. You gotta, you gotta get the game, you gotta play well, gotta dodge. That's his big ol' slam. I think that's actually the same slam that uh, the warrior uh, class, or barb class, whatever it's called, has, has access to. It's like a three-part charge-up slam that does like big damage. I don't think I ever tanked it, because it's like, it's such a very clearly telegraphed wind-up that, you know, just, just dodge well. The anvil, though, is a bit harder to see. Uh, until you like know what to look for like if, if you're just sitting there staring at the boss from range You might not notice the circle expanding around your character and then uh, and then it you know one shots you Thankfully the Sunder didn't if this Sunder one shot me it would have required some very uh, Precise gaming skills to succeed on this boss I, My character did a lot of damage and it's ranged and I have good life by sustain so like it was My character was set up to succeed I, I, I witnessed, ooh, I got up on the, the, the frontal backle, <laughs> but with, with the back portion of it. But like thankfully this character just like barely sized most of those damage events. It's not just like pure one-shots. 
I, I watched a few other guys fight this boss after I was kind of done playing, and they were they were having some struggles. Like like the the Sork seemed like it was a lot harder to reach this level of damage, so the fight was way longer, and it was um, like Sork had to, like doesn't have the life blast sustain nodes that Ranger has, so they had to like teleport out of town to refill life blast charges. It was like a like like a raid boss for them, and I, I was just running in circles having a good time, absolutely vibing. So I think the dodge roll actually is an iframe for those kind of damage events, I think. Not not this slam, but um, for like normal default attacks, it's kind of like an iframe if you time it properly. I didn't there. But it's not too hard to stay uh, out of range of this guy and take him down and free the prisoner. I don't know who the prisoner is, but we freed him. Go me. The final boss of Act 1, which has a very gruesome arena. There's like some tentacle monster in a cage. Like I don't. I'm not a lore guy, but I I kind of want to know like what is, like what are they doing to that thing? Why are they? Like, what, what's happening? Why are they doing this? No noose this time. I'll remove your head myself. And he is a proper boss. This is my first time rewatching this fight uh, since fighting it. Um, when fighting it, I didn't fully. Uh, like understand every telegraph perfectly because I, I think I actually killed him on my, my first attempt so I didn't really you know have time to to learn everything a, a, every single event he's got some charges you know big old cleaves they don't really one shot because I mean it, it's a huge cleave it shouldn't one shot oh and it's a werewolf yeah he can turn into a wolf and then he does that which my character <laughs> probably shouldn't be able to tank that considering how gruesome it sounds, but I'm beefy, I'm strong, I guess. And that, another big old charge that shoots out like arrows to the side, he just called like a meteor from the sky, which I got. This guy has a lot of abilities. And he goes back between like wolf and human form. He wants to open a cage now. Here's what that's gonna be. If I didn't have the life blast sustain nodes, this fight would be so much more challenging. But thankfully, I can kind of just tank him and just pop through it for the most part. We're having a good time. So she's about to open that cage. Oh, it's... Jesus. So he's transforming into like a... What I think is a permanent werewolf form. And now he's got like a frontal breath. And he's still wearing a sword, or holding a sword while being a wolf. My god, is a big damn. So he dies pretty fast. He actually has, I think this is going to be the Verana mechanic, I think, from Expedition. Or, I guess Verana is the Iron Count mechanic from Po2. I'm not sure what, what was created for first. But he spawns some ads, goes out into the mist, you know, charges through you. I'm getting a lot of life flash charges back from my Ranger node. So, like, honestly, that, that's like the most OP node on the tree, that, at least that I had access to. You just have so many life flash charges, you can just tank all this damage, just pop through it, having a great time. Like, all these charges... I probably should be avoiding them with dodge roll, but I kind of just tank him <laughs> and just fought through it. He's got a, a big old frontal. I think he still has the charge mechanic in this phase. Bro, I, I think I tanked every single ability on this fight and just didn't care. Just absolutely glorious, out outskilled, truly. I'm using mostly storm color arrow. I haven't done, been doing much like lightning around lightning arrow stuff here. Because this boss is very mobile, it's just kind of hard to to set up properly for it. That is so much burst, Jesus! That was a barrage storm color arrow combo. Just like thirty percent of his life, just absolutely dumpstered, easily defeated. On to Act Two. So this is the start of Act Two, and. When you first get here, uh, they don't like you. They think you're weird, and you have to prove yourself by killing some hyena. So we're gonna head over there and do that, or try to. Is that this is actually a fight that they showcased at Exile Con uh, Two? For I believe it actually was the Ranger that started the Act Two, and or was it the Sork? I think it was a Sork. Either way, everyone that fought it was getting absolutely obliterated by the hordes of hyenas that come to fight you. Uh, throughout the fight and when you kill the boss. Um, thankfully, my class is OP and I have good abilities, so that's not gonna be a problem at all for us, I'm sure. Uh, the, you know, the visuals instantly change, the multi-type instantly, very different than the end of Act 1. 
we're just in like this giant desert, mostly using the same abilities. I don't know if I have Herald of Thunder at this point. I don't think I do yet. If I did, you would see a buff in the top left every, every now and then. Herald of Thunder is very different than it is in uh, Path of Exile 1. It, <laughs> I'm having a hard time this game shouting through that, through that corridor. But the way Herald of Thunder works is like, you shock a monster and it gives you five stacks. And your next five attack hits explode. And it does absurd damage. Like the moment I got Herald of Thunder, I was just breezing through, just one shotting every single pack that I came into contact with. So it was really powerful. But we don't have it here at this point. I think I have to level, level up again and get like a new skill gem before I get it. So it's not until after um, we get to the care event, Star Act 2. We are using some uh, Storm Color Arrow still. Storm Color Arrow uh, stayed like one of the best single target skills uh, throughout most of this character's uh, lifetime. Well, I say lifetime. It died a lot. So if it was hardcore, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have made it very far. I think if I had to play this again, like right now, I probably could do a hardcore Act One. It'd be pretty slow, but you have to really, really slowly because because of this. I keep just. <laughs> If you walk into a range of monsters as a ranger, you die. Like, you just, you get meleeed. Those monsters had haste, you know, you die. And here we are coming up on the uh, hyena little mini boss thing. I don't know if he's a hyena. No, he's not. But he has friends that are hyenas. And I'm having a really hard time shooting straight. That's, like, so I played with mouse movement this entire time. WASD would make it a lot easier to move while shooting it in like a specific direction, but I, I didn't uh, do it because I am a boomer and I'm safe to mouse movement. I just stuck with it for this entire time. I'll test that out once I uh, can play the game the next time. So here's these Swords of Hyenas instantly. Uh, I just drop the lightning rods, do the barrage lightning arrow, and it just wipes the floor with pretty much all of them. That we're in range of the rods. And never having a good time doing big damage. We're gonna kill him before he even summons hyena this gun. And uh, when you kill this guy, a swarm comes. A whole lot. Thankfully, I have lightning rods. So I'm gonna easily overcome this challenge. Eh. Cut. Cut that. Cut that. That didn't happen. And that's Act Two. Well, the start of Act Two. <laughs> Not all of it. Act Two goes on for much, much longer. But you know, we don't have time to show everything in one video.